Okay, so for those of you that aren't up on Weird Al Yankovic, how long have you been playing with Weird Al and how many albums has Weird Al released? Uh, I've been with Weird Al since September 14th, 1980, so it is 39 years as of... You remember the date. I remember you posted something recently about the date and the time, yeah. And uh, we've recorded 14 studio albums. 14. And had a series of uh, hits albums, as well as a box set housed in an accordion. Oh my gosh. And uh, live videos and uh, compilations of our uh, uh, record videos and books. It never ends. uh, It never ends. The music videos are epic. Yeah. So you want to be in the band, you program drums. Uh, Someone else is going to do your gig. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll get a drum machine. That's I'll some learn. work. So I, I grew as a drummer and a programmer wow. and a sound designer. Amazing. And, uh, it's been great. That's that's incredible. Let's look at this snare drum that you brought. I heard you brought a couple of items, and we're going to take These a look at them weird. right now. All right, let's see. Weird. It. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, is that glass? No. What do we got? But it's air. You can certainly see through it. It's air. Nice. What is that? This is a Marcus de Mowbray spacer snare. I have space. The, uh, and not, you know, you think no shell, right? It's sensitive as hell. But th- th- and that just goes to show you what the true action of a snare is, and that is the force going down here yep. into that head. Yeah, Sound it's, waves. It's, it's not going out the side. Sound it's, waves. It's doing yep. what it's supposed to do. Wow. Uh, d- there are about 30 of these drums. This is number 27. Uh, I eventually spoke to Marcus. He's based in London, and he gave me. He's got. He's got a drum set that's done. So, so that's that's one of my cool snares. There's a funny story about this drum. I saw it when I was in London in a cool drum shop, and uh, I didn't actually buy it then. But I asked them about it. They said we we know nothing about this. I said uh, okay. Well, it's kind of cool. Anyway, got home. I thought about the drums some more, and I wanted it really bad. Anyway, turns out the guy that made the drum is in London. And these guys didn't even know about it. Wow. Uh, and I did eventually... Uh, and that was at a drum shop? A, this was at a drum shop in, in town. And they didn't even know. And they did. They had no idea. Uh, at any rate, I ended up with it. Only a handful of these. Beautiful. Very cool. Very cool. Let's put, let's put that sucker on the stand. Let's give it a little, sa- let's give it a little sound about it. This was made in the 90s. Oh, 90s. In the mid-90s. Wow. Uh, and he actually, I, I don't have them with me, but he had two foam blocks, and those go inside, you stick them inside, and they touch the head. And that's what helps muffle the head. And also, and one of his premises was, you could put a mic inside here when you're recording with it, and you turn the trim way down, because it's like so immediate that it's complete Smash. isolation from the rest of the kit. You do that with each of the other drums, and you get pure isolation. Nice. So a, a pretty fun drum, very limited production on these, and uh, a, a nice addition. To you my don't collection. even know what the value of it is, huh? I, I don't I don't know. I'm gonna give it a value of umpteen thousand dollars. I'll take it. And it's the famous drums tubulated aperture snare, also known as the famous ventastic snare, also known as the turbine snare. Whoa, turbine! I like that you came with notes. Well, I, I, well, this I was man's gonna, I was gonna for the interview. That whole thing. So, Holy schnickel! I don't know why it's called a turbine snare, but I understand the rest of them. Oh, this shit. thing... Is that wood or is that... This um, is wood. Wow. This was made by Joe Partridge in 2009. I bought this at the Chicago Drum Show. Every every joint in here is dovetailed and wow. fitted. No screws or anything except to hold the hardware on. Wow. A lot of wood the in this. The carpenter in me freaking loves that. Oh, and it's heavy. It's dense. It's very dense. Now, one one thing, and this I, is I, maple plywood. <coughs> I, I guess so. Wow. Yes, yeah, it's like this is four ply, five ply maple plywood. There's only wow. one of these, and first thing he says to me, he says, "You're not going to play it, are you?" I said, "I no, no. I mean, I it's just like it's a cool drum." He says, "Okay, because it's really not." I don't think. <laughs> you know what? Intrinsic value is everything with stuff like this, and this is definitely like, yeah, you can't get it, you can't replace it. And this is one of a kind. And it was just sort of a, of, of a uh, an experiment in woodworking. We're gonna play it anyway. We're gonna we're gonna give it a little a little yeah. test. Yeah. Actually, it's not that terrible. That doesn't sound that it's, bad. Okay, so he was lying. Yes. <laughs> That's a nice fat. Very cool. I, I really like how he 
how he installed the lugs, and he's got like these um, lug rockers in there. Yeah, this is a majorly engineered From piece. different, you know, these are like <laughs> lug inserts from other different lugs. That's fucking cool. Very neat. Yeah, one of a kind, and, uh, and where'd I actually saw- Where'd you get that one? Chicago Drum Show 2009. Wow. From Joe himself. And then you just have one of these, huh? This is the only one. And uh, this has been, it's made the rounds on Facebook so many times, somebody else has actually posted the picture, you know, wondering what it was. I said, hey, that's my picture. My <laughs> nice. drone, my photo. Love it. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that. You are welcome.